What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome to my OBS 2022 complete guide. We'll be running through a whole bunch of different scenarios, settings and options throughout the series. So of course, do subscribe if you'd like to see more. On top of this, I'm planning on doing giveaways in the near future, so keep your eyes out for that too, including Discord Nitro. Anyways, this video is going to focus on setting up OBS Studio for the first time to simply record a game. This video is here for anyone who wants to record their game, display or anything like that. It's a simple crash course for OBS Studio and won't go too into depth. I'll have tons more videos linked in the description down below, as well as a playlist if you'd like to learn more about OBS Studio. It's really powerful software. On top of this, this isn't a stream guide, but it is tied into that guide. You'll find that linked in the description down below as well when I create and upload it. So first of all, you'll need to download OBS Studio. In the description down below, you'll find a download link. Upon heading across to it, choose your operating system, in my case Windows, and then click Download Installer. When it downloads, click on it to open it up, click Yes when prompted for admin, and follow through with the installation steps. I'm already recording with OBS, so I'll be downloading a portable version just to show you what things to do. The installation process is really on rails and easy to follow along with. Once OBS Studio opens up, you'll see a screen similar to this if it's your first time running the program. If it is, choose Optimize for Recording, as this is a recording guide, once again a streaming guide when it's available in the description down below. Then click Next, leave Use Current as the base canvas resolution, and for FPS, choose 60. Then Next, and Apply Settings. Now we have a fresh copy of OBS here, ready for us to use. All you have to do is click Settings in the bottom right, and we'll start in here. There's lots of setup, but of course you only have to do this once, so pay attention. First of all, head across to the Audio tab, leave the Sample Rate at 48, Channels at Stereo, and look for Global Audio Devices. What we're going to do is change the desktop audio to the device that you have desktop audio coming from. I'll choose Output 1, 2. If you have a second audio device, such as different speakers or something else you'd like to record sound from, you can select it here under Desktop Audio 2. I'll get back to more fancy things later on. For now, I'm just going to record my desktop audio and my microphone. So, Mic slash Auxiliary Audio, choose the drop down and choose your microphone from here. Then click Apply. Now we'll be heading across to the Video tab. Inside of here, Choose the base canvas resolution that you'd like to record at. Usually, you'll want to record at the same resolution as your monitor. In my case, 2K, 2560 by 1440. Output scaled resolution should match the one above. Otherwise, if it's lower, it could be blurry and, of course, cost extra performance. That is determined by the downscale filter, which we'll set to the lowest option, bilinear, because we're not changing the scaling at all. We're set up to work in 2K and record in 2K. You, of course, will have 1080p, 4K, or anything like that. Then, for the FPS, leave it at common FPS value and set it to 60. You can always come back and change this to 30 later on if you need. Click Apply. Now, head across to the Output tab, and inside of here, we'll be changing it from Simple Mode to Advanced Mode. Then, head across to the Recording tab. Once again, the streaming video will be coming out soon and linked down below. On the Recording tab, leave the type as Standard, and for Recording Path, click Browse if you'd like to change where it's recording to. I'll just leave it in the Videos folder over here. Then, Recording Format should be MKV, because even though we're used to MP4s, if you record an MP4, OBS Studio crashes, you'll lose your entire recording. MKV at least, if it crashes, you'll have everything up until the point that it does crash. Though, you'll need an extra step called muxing. How exactly does that work? Well, we'll return to the settings window just now. If you choose to record an MKV, which I recommend, some editing software won't like it very much. If that's the case, we'll need to convert it to MP4. To do so, we'll need to remux. Click File in the top left, then Remux Recordings, and inside of here, click the three dots, then navigate across to where your videos are located, double click on one of them, and then click Remux. This will take the MKV file and make an MP4 file that editing software should be happy with. When it's done so, you can delete the MKV and work with just the MP4. Anyways, back to the Output Recording section. Next up, Audio Track. These are different audio streams in the finished video file. Almost all video editors support multiple tracks. I'd highly recommend that you use them. Why? Well, I record my game to one track, Discord to another track, and my voice to a third. This way, I can change the volume of any of these later on, or apply effects to each of them individually. So, I'll be recording my game audio to track 1, and my microphone to track 2. Super simple. 
I'll take both of these here. If you're streaming, you'll need to have all of your audio combined into one track to be sent off to a streaming website. For this case, I'd say put everything into track one, then your mic into track two or game audio and mic or game audio into track three. That way you can have everything separated while still having a combined audio track for streaming. This is a bit advanced and I'll be coming back to this in my streaming guide. For now, I'll just have two tracks, one for my game, two for my microphone. Now we'll be heading into the audio mixer section over here. Right click anywhere in a blank space and choose advanced audio properties. Inside of here, we have a couple of options such as changing the balance, volume, etc. for all of our inputs inside of the audio mixer here. But what we're interested in is the far right here, tracks. We'll start by unticking absolutely everything in this matrix. Everything you tick here is what the audio source will be sent to. I'll send my desktop audio to track one and my microphone to track two. This way it matches my settings, audio, output, recording over here. Audio track one and two are being recorded and what's being sent to them, well, into one, my desktop audio and two, my microphone. If you're someone who streams, you may be recording three tracks or rather two and three onwards. Track one, you'll have everything combined as such. Track one, all your audio combined that's sent out to your stream, then two for your desktop audio and three for your microphone. Though we'll come back to this in my streaming guide, which you'll once again find below. For now, your desktop audio and microphone audio go to one specific place. In the options tab, it's also a very good idea to head across to the audio tab at the very top and change these audio bit rates here to be higher if you're recording. This gives you more movement later if you'd like to add audio effects. 160 is rather low for audio, 320 is the default for high quality MP3s and probably the option you want here. Make sure to select it here. The replay buffer at the very top allows you to have a shadow play like feature with OBS Studio, which I'll be covering in another video. If you'd like to see it, do check the description down below. From the encoder section over here, click the drop down and choose NVENC or AMD's equivalent if you have it available. X264 uses only your CPU. We'll be running through both of these options now. If you have NVENC or AMD's equivalent, select that. Leave Rescale Output off and Custom Muxo Settings empty. From the Rate Control over here, you can choose CBR if you'd like a constant bitrate, VBR if you'd like a variable bitrate with a target and a maximum, or preferably CQP, constant quality. This way, whatever the CQ level is, it'll record at and use as much or as little bitrate as it needs. This is much better. Basically, the higher that this number is, the easier it is for your computer to encode it, but it'll look more blocky and not be as good in the output. However, if we lower this number, it'll take much more processing power, but will have a much cleaner image. So I'd recommend you keep this at around 15 if you're using NVENC, or you can always raise this later on if you're struggling with your graphics card. 15 to low 20s is probably the best here. Keyframe interval, leave at zero. Preset, leave it at quality, or you can choose one of the other options here. I don't notice much of a difference. Profile, we'll leave it high. Look ahead, off. Psycho visual tuning on. GPU, zero, and max B frames, two. Super simple. Click apply and we're basically done here. If you don't have a GPU option or you prefer CPU, which allows you to compress your video quite a bit more using less bitrate for higher quality video, which is preferred for streams, or you simply don't have an NVENC or AMD equivalent chip in your computer, so you have to use the CPU encoder. If that's the case, you once again can choose CBR or VBR for constant or variable bitrate, but we also have CRF, which is basically the same thing. Once again, the higher this number is, the less CPU it'll use, but also the lower the quality. You'll need to play around with this, but leaving this at 20 is probably okay. Keyframe interval, leave at zero. Profile, set to high. Tune, leave at none. And leave X264 options blank. Now for the most involved option, the CPU usage preset. Higher equals less CPU. So the faster that things are, say, faster, very fast, super fast, ultra fast, the less CPU you'll be using. The lower you go down on this list, the more CPU you'll be using, but of course the better the quality will be in the output file and the smaller the file size will be. You do eventually reach diminishing returns, so don't bother going too low. Usually leaving this on faster or very fast 
is good enough. If you have a really powerful computer, you can set this to faster and go from there. What you really need to do is click apply. And when you're done setting up OBS Studio completely, remember to come back to this option. You can check your task manager to see your CPU usage, or of course you can record a demanding game with lots happening visually. This way you'll be able to tell if the setting is set too high and it's taking too much of your computer. Then you can turn this down or turn it up to get better performance results on your computer. Once again, if you have a graphics card option, choose that instead. CQP, 20, quality, high, etc. Click apply, and now we're basically done here. What we're gonna do is add sources to record next, as our screen is just black. In the sources window, in the bottom left over here, right click anywhere, hover over add, and then we have multiple options to choose from. We can choose audio input capture, browser capture, display capture, game capture, image, window capture, etc. Window capture, game capture, and display capture are the three main ways of recording your screen. Display capture captures everything, game capture captures only games, and window capture records any windows. That means that it includes the bar up here. But now I'll start with display capture. Give it any name and click OK. Now inside of the properties menu that we can get to by simply double clicking the source, or right clicking and clicking properties, we can change the settings for this input. Simply choose the correct display here and whether you want to capture the cursor or not. It's super simple. You may notice that your screen is black. If it is, you're able to change the capture method here between DXGI, Windows 10 and up, and they'll give you different performance, but different results in each. If you don't know the difference, well, it's relatively simple. A little analogy that I use is the fact that I can't record the Xbox game bar. I need to choose anything other than automatic or DXGI, such as Windows 10. This will place a yellow border around your screen and sometimes cause some input latency. It's not preferred, but it may be better on your computer. Anyways, click OK, and now we're practically set up here. If it's not set in the right position, right click the source, hover over transform and click bit to screen. This way, no matter what you're recording, it'll always be the size of your screen. If you'd like to adjust it, you can grab the corners to resize it however you'd like, and you can reset it with a transform bit to screen once again. If you hold alt, then drag one of the corners or sides, you'll be able to crop the actual image itself. This is very useful, though of course, not always something you're looking for. Hit Ctrl Z, which is a recent feature, to undo changes that you make that you're not happy with. If you haven't chosen to fit to screen and you drag one of the sides, you'll instead see the crop as such. Represented by a green line, you'll know that something was removed there and you can bring it back by expanding it. Awesome. Now we're practically set up to record. All you need to do is click Start Recording and you'll be recording your screen. As you can see, I've got music going and I'm speaking here. I'll stop my recording, file and show recordings. This will open up my recordings folder. And as you can see, here's the video I just recorded. Nice and small video file, but it does look really good. Awesome. Now, of course, display capture is not the only way of recording. If you'd like to record only a game, so you can even have it minimized and it'll still record the game, choose the add sources button or right click it, add and add a game capture. This works a little bit differently. We can capture any full screen application automatically or capture a specific window. This is preferred. Choose this and choose the game from the window dropdown over here. Note that the game will have to be running and of course it needs to show up on the list here. This isn't always the case. Also note that you will have to return here if your game's not recording properly, i.e. you don't see it on the screen. What you can do is select the correct window again or choose to capture foreground window with hotkey. This way, whenever we press a key when we're tabbed into a game, it'll automatically select the window for us. I find this very useful. For this, click OK, head into settings, then hotkeys, and scroll down over here until you see the source. In my case, it's game capture. Capture foreground window. Click here and choose something like control plus, for example. This way, you won't accidentally click it. Click apply and OK. This way, whenever we're playing a game, hit Control plus and the game capture will capture that window. Nice and simple. Once again, right click, transform and fit to screen to have it covering everything as it should be. Finally, I'll click the plus and add a window capture. Click OK. And as you can see, we're capturing just one specific window. I can move it around on my screen here 
And of course, you can see exactly how it works. Super simple. We can once again choose the window here, choose the capture method, and we can change how the window is found. Usually, you won't really be using this option, but it is something you can. Click OK, and we're practically done. Now, unfortunately, unlike game capture, there's no way to automatically select the window here. So you'll need to come back and open up the settings yourself. If you don't like any sources, you can right click and remove them, use the delete key or use the minus button down here. Now we're ready to go ahead and hop in a game and record. Let's just say that for some reason you have a black screen in this window here. What can you do? Well, first of all, restart OBS and see if that fixes the issue. Otherwise, try a different capture method if you're using display capture, window capture, game capture. Otherwise, try using a different capture method and that could fix the issue. If you're still having an issue, try closing OBS, then running it as administrator. And finally, if you're running a notebook, laptop, or anything with multiple GPUs, that could be the cause of the issue. Hit start and type in GPU, then open graphics settings. Inside of here, simply look for graphics performance preference on Windows 10. On Windows 11, this may be named something different. Choose desktop app from the dropdown and then click browse. What we're gonna do is navigate across to where OBS is installed. Usually see program files and OBS studio. Open up bin 64 bit and finally obs64.exe. Of course, if you have it installed elsewhere, navigate across to it and select the main obs64.exe. Then click options and choose high performance here, and then save. Restart obs and see if it's working. If it's not, choose options once again, and this time power saving, save, and head back to OBS Studio. See if the issue is fixed. That's really all you need to know for fixing that issue. It should be relatively simple. So finally, for a quick test, I'll click start recording. And of course, you can see I have a desktop audio here and microphone audio over here. I'll click stop recording. I'll head into my videos folder over here and I have the video file here. All that I have to do is file, Remux recordings, choose it, Remux, okay, close, and now it's in MP4. I can delete the original MKV file. I use Premiere Pro, so I'll drop it into here. As such, I'll make a new sequence for it. And as you can see, I have three tracks, one for the video, one for my game audio, and one for me. So making things a bit bigger, you can see that I'm talking at this bottom track and I have music playing over here. You can see they look completely different, which means that they're split up properly. This way, I can completely remove music, turn it down, etc., etc., and play with my own microphone, Discord, etc., separately. It's a really useful feature, and that's why we have things split up. Do note that if you open the file inside of something like Windows Media Player, it'll only play track one. In that case, you might want to record everything combined on track one, track two separately for your game audio, three for your microphone, etc., etc. For that, you'll have it set up as such. One and one, then two for your desktop audio, and three for your microphone. Each of these are being sent to two different places. Settings, Output, Recording, and I'll be recording one, two, and three. This way, when I'm editing, I can remove track one and work with everything separately, or if I'm listening to it in Windows Media Player, etc., it'll only play track one. Super simple. And with that, my OBS How to Record a Game slash Crash Course has come to a close. If you'd like to know how to stream properly with OBS Studio and get the most out of it, do check the description down below. I'll be covering lots of topics, some of which you may not even know about, even if you're a somewhat experienced streamer, that especially goes out to my South African friends. There's some important tips in that video if you don't know about them. Anyways, giveaways coming soon. Do subscribe if you'd like to see more of the series, and once again, related videos in the description down below. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!